Golf Central on YouTube. Brought to you by the Rogue ST Woods and Irons from Callaway. Mission Hills Country Club in Rancho Mirage, California, home of the Chevron Championship since its inception in 1972 when Jane Blaylock was your winner. It's been a major championship since 1983 when Amy Alcott won the first of her three titles. The most recent winner is Patty Tavitanikit of UCLA, coming off a two-shot win last year. Now we welcome in the World Golf Hall of Fame member, our own Judy Rankin. Judy, you've watched the Chevron Championship grow from tournament to major, and this will be the last year at Mission Hills. Your thoughts as the event prepares to move on in 2023? Uh, too many thoughts, probably. Um, I was the vice president of the LPGA in 1971, and I went to, um, I attended a, a sales meeting uh, with Colgate Palmolive in San Diego, and then drove across the mountain with uh, the execs from uh, Colgate, and we came here to Mission Hills and announced the very first tournament in 72. So uh, I go back to the very beginning, and um, and I'm here now for this last one at Mission Hills, and I, I, I was thinking it wouldn't be that emotional. I think Chevron has stepped up and done some great things for the LPGA, but uh, it has been a little more emotional than I thought. And it is such a beautiful place. And players um, over a lot of years um, have always thought this was a great test of golf. Well, let's talk about what we're going to see this year. All eyes on world number one, Jin Young Ko, already a winner in 2022 and coming off 16 straight rounds in the 60s. She hasn't had a round over par since the summer. If you can narrow it down, what impresses you the most about her game right now? Uh, I, you know, she, she rarely, uh, she rarely doesn't win as she didn't yesterday and then, um, backs that up with several more times of not winning. It, it, it seems to inspire her not to win and she will always have this great bounce back. So I kind of expect that bounce back this week, but. I don't think we have a player in the game right now who is any better at preparing themselves for, uh, you know, the, the four or five biggest weeks of the year on the tour. She just knows how to prepare herself. She knows how to, uh, well, I can't say she knows how to, but I what must say I observe uh, this really terrific calmness about the way she plays golf. And uh, anybody who isn't quite that calm playing golf will uh, certainly tell you uh, how valuable that is. We just saw 19 year old Ataya Titikun win over the weekend. She was low amateur in 2018 at Mission Hills by all accounts, a rising star in the game. Why so much excitement around her in your mind? Uh, well, I, I think we've already been exposed to um, some young players like her who are so good right off the bat, they don't seem to, there is no learning curve. And I, I will say that, you know, in the days gone by, in the days gone by at Mission Hills, a um, long time ago, players came to the tour to kind of kind of learn their craft. Uh, not to learn how to play golf, but to learn how to be a professional and so on. Uh, that is no longer true. Players come, you know, right from the get-go ready to compete, ready to be there, and they do not seem to be intimidated in any sort of way. So she's one of a handful uh, that are um, showing us, you know, pretty extreme talent and pretty extreme talent at a young age. Judy, no Nelly Korda this week, uh, which means Daniel Kang is the only American in the top 10 at the Chevron. Brittany Linscombe, the last American to win this event in 2015. Do any of the American women have a shot this year? I think a lot of players have a shot this year. I think there's going to be some inspiration um, with the last time to actually compete here at Mission Hills. And I also think uh, Mission Hills doesn't separate itself in a way that some players are not in the mix. Like every golf course, uh, it's an advantage to be long. But you have to putt well to play well here. And the greens are very subtle. Uh, they're, they're also, might I say, very perfect because I've been out there on them. And uh, if you don't putt well here and if you don't read the greens well, you will not be a winner. But I just think almost everybody who is playing well, regardless of their particular type of game, has a chance here because you use every club in your bag. 
Judy, you announced you were retiring at the end of the year. You've been associated with the LPGA Tour for 60 years as a player or broadcaster. As you head into this final victory lap, your thoughts on the state of the LPGA Tour? Uh, the state of the tour is really terrific. Uh, there are there are so many young people out here uh, that I have come to admire, uh, both as both as players and as people. And um, I, I think everything is going to be just fine. It is, it's it's in a place now where there are professionals in another sense, really running and operating this tour. Uh, they listen to the players, uh, and I cannot, I I just I can't see it going wrong. The time. The time is right, and the time seems to be right for the LPGA Tour. And a big reason for that is the way these players conduct themselves. So uh, I look, I look forward to, uh, in the years to come, being a viewer and uh, visiting once in a while and uh, seeing, seeing what the next step for um, these players and how good they can become. Well, in terms of your next step, I hope you get to walk slow and soak up every second this week out in the California desert. Judy, thanks for joining us on Golf Central. Thank you. Appreciate it.